What's up, humans? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I've got another discussion video for you. This time, we are going to look at worms. All worms that are pretty much relevant in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I like doing these discussions about the, the, the less developed types in Yu-Gi-Oh! Worm. Kind of feels like a type of dragon, but technically it's different. And there are cards that only work for worms, not for dragons, only work for dragons, not for worms. So I think this is one of those underdeveloped uh, types. I'd love to see more support in the future. And uh, so we're going to be talking about everything this type has to offer and how it could have implications in future you know, competitive iterations of this card game. So we might as well start off with archetypes. I think that covers the biggest base of everything we need to see here. Obviously, first off here, we have Yang Zings. This was, uh, it's had its heyday and it still is super interesting. And I say that because I believe almost all, if not all of the main deck Yang Zings have a very similar effect where if they're just, just destroyed by battle or card effect, you can just summon any other Yang Zing straight from the deck. That is your opponent's card or yours. So there's definitely ways to pop your own stuff to trigger your own effects and there's a lot of power in that they also have a myriad of awesome awesome uh synchro monsters which we'll get to later um but yeah just a great great archetype that's based around synchro summoning that uh definitely could have implications moving forward Next up is Tenyin. This is this is probably the one archetype on here that actually hasn't seen any real competitive play, uh, barring Vashuda. Um, but it's a really cool archetype. A lot of people haven't really delved into. It's link based. You kind of summon like big Chungusy uh, vanillas that uh, have protection, and then you can set up certain disruptions here and there. Um, it's a cool archetype. I actually think it's a cool deck that like not as many people delved into as they should have because it can grind. It doesn't set up insane boards, but it does set up sticky hard to outboards which uh can definitely have its uses and yeah just another cool archetype that uh has some some really cool uh, tools that we'll talk about later as well um next up is true draco uh this one i don't think i really need to explain um you know we've seen we saw this deck for like four years straight um so next, it, it can be really good. I think we're slowly in the process of getting like cards off the ban list for this deck, which could change some things. We'll see. Um, but they're cool. You tribute continuous spells and traps, get out and get them out. They get you continuous resources. The only thing with the true Dracos is they don't really synergize with a lot of decks. Uh, so it seems. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as well and see uh, what the deal with that is. Um, and then uh, True Kings, of course, if you're going to talk about True Draco, you got to talk about True Kings. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand, but the True Kings specifically do pop your own stuff. So there's more synergy with the Yang Zings there. Definitely something to keep an eye on. We fairly recently got Lithosagem off the ban list. Um, so we'll see what goes on with that. But also searchable with Diagram. Diagram's at one, but maybe if Konami really wanted to make True Draco playable again, they'd, they'd put Diagram to, to two or three and... Uh, that could also result in True Kings being more played. Um, and I believe, is this the last one? No, there's one more. Okay. Uh, Metaphist here is a really cool archetype. It's based off of banishing uh, their own monsters to trigger their effects. They have really powerful effects, but uh, the deck just seems a little bit too slow and doesn't really do any board setup too much. Um, it, it always looked like an archetype that had potential, but uh, we, we haven't seen the right kind of synergistic cards to really work with it and, and allow it to do something that can compete with the modern day Yu-Gi-Oh! But it is still cool. Um, definitely a super interesting archetype um, that just wants to banish your own cards to trigger effects, which is very cool. But um, yeah, it's just cool. And the last uh, you know archetype here to talk to mention at all is Virtual World. This one's a so-so, right? Because half of Virtual Worlds is worms, half of them is psychic, so it's not even a fully worm archetype. But... Uh, I figured it's worth mentioning since Virtual World is like arguably the best deck in the game right now, period. So <laughs> like, I guess that makes it worth mentioning that half the archetype is Worm. So yeah, I guess if there's awesome Worm cards that come out in the future, this, this could be something cool to mention. All right, then we get to the generic cards, starting with the monsters. This is the more exciting part, right? The archetypes are cool. We know about the archetypes, but I just want to skim through them. First off here for the monsters, Mare Mare or Mare Mare, whatever you want to call him. This card is insane. Probably the biggest card you need to note when talking about generic worm cards that already exist. If you don't know what this guy does, he can't be special summoned except by a worm monster. And during your main phase, you can reduce his level by one and then you get a Mare Mare token. It's just a level one water worm, um, but you can use that effect not once, not twice per turn 
but three times per turn. That is insanely strong. This card is, a, if you get it on the field, it's a link four immediately, four materials or a synchro. He's a tuner by himself, so... Yeah, you could even summon him, go token, token, token. If you if Deng Long somehow got unbanned, him and a token could make Deng Long, and you still have two link materials left over. So incredibly strong. You have to keep this card in mind because any generic um uh, any generic two worms can actually get you to this guy, and we'll talk about that later as well. Next up, Tenny Spirit Vashuda. I know we already mentioned Tenny's, but this is one of the few cards in Tenny's that I think are definitely worth noting uh, by themselves, right? We've seen this card pop up when um, when Orcus were the best deck in the game. This card was played in Orcus because it was a dark extender um, and also baited, allowed you to uh, baited stuff and allowed you to play into boards really nicely, right? Um, because you can special summon him if you control no effect monsters, which means no monsters you just summon him out for free cool then um if you control a vanilla monster on the field you can uh, banish him from your graveyard to target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand so you would just play like one copy of monk in your extra deck just so you could summon a shooter make a monk try to bounce something you haven't used your normal summon only took one card in hand and you still kept the body on field while like either baiting a negate or removing uh, a threat from the field which is really really solid so definitely something to note um not even just for worm decks but any deck out there but specifically in worm if, if the synergy could be even better arch nemesis protos this is a really cool card that a lot of people thought looked really good i thought that i, th I still think this is a good card i just don't think we've seen it come to fruition just yet i don't think the right deck has come along come along that allows this deck to uh this card to really thrive um this card can be summoned by your hand by banishing three monsters with different attributes from grave honestly not the hardest thing uh to do at all also you can banish from field so there's actually synergy with like metaphys a little bit there um it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects oh no just card effects sorry but 25 3000 damn can't be destroyed by card effects and then uh you can declare one uh, monster attribute on the field so it has to be a, a, an attribute that's already on the field then you destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute and until the end of the next turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that attribute. So that effect's kind of crazy because one, you could call dark, destroy himself. Neither player can summon darks for the next two turns. Maybe uh, your deck isn't actually dark. It's just him. So you trade him to essentially put your opponent under a crazy, crazy floodgate, right? For a whole turn or something. And maybe their deck is dark. You play Orcist. Oh, they can't play at all. Cool. We'll OTK them. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, or whatever. Or once you know, maybe you have a deck that's pretty versatile at just putting a, diff a myriad of different attributes on the field, and then you just destroy them. Maybe combining this with Yang Zings. Pop, they're all different attributes. You pop a Yang Zing to then lock your opponent out of an attribute. Then that Yang Zing floats it to another Yang Zing. Cool. We didn't even lose any advantage. Gotta love it. Right, so I definitely think this card has huge, huge, huge potential. It's a worm, cool. Like there's synergy there, and and I think that's cool uh, as well. So definitely a card to know. Next up is Needhog Generator Boss of Ice, another different archetype card that's actually pretty interesting because this deck can uh, because worms in general can actually seem to potentially be able to work with any worm out there uh if you could just get this guy on the field he doesn't put himself on the field he could tribute any generator or worm to negate the summon uh the special summon of a monster um which is actually <laughs> that's a pretty strong disruption right it's just like a solemn strike uh essentially not spell speed four but still it's pretty pretty high up there but i guess strike a spell speed three i don't know whatever um it can't be responded to it just uh it is still a powerful disruption because the monster doesn't even get to hit the field at all. So definitely pretty cool. I like that it tributes any generator or worm. So you could actually keep him on the field to negate future summons by tributing another worm. And uh, he's also a big body. So definitely like him. I think he's a cool card. Then we get to the spells. So, so unsurprisingly, there's actually not even enough, a ton of monsters. We went through the generic monsters like pretty dang quick. What was that? Five, one, two, three, four four like there's really not that many right so that's kind of tough but luckily the engines of the archetypes actually are generally pretty good for worm decks in general so 
Got to keep that in mind. So moving forward, we have Vessel uh, for the Dragon Cycle. This card's pretty cool. It lets you send any worm monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can also add from your deck to your hand any Tenyu monster with a different name from the monster sent. Uh, so it's a Foolish with the upside of potentially also being a Rota for a Tenyu. Um, so if we got just a super graveyard-centric uh, worm deck, cool. Send one of your graveyard-centric worms. Then, it, maybe if you splashed a Tenny engine with the deck, because they're worms, cool, Tenny's help you span the board, uh, you also get the potential, if you open it with a Tenny, to, to just get an extra free search, an extra free extender, and that's kind of crazy. This card definitely has huge, huge potential for any future worm uh, archetype. Heavenly Dragon Circle, this is another one that's pretty cool. You have to tribute a worm on field, then you get to add any worm from your deck to your hand. Uh, but if you tribute a non-effect monster, you can special summon it instead, but it gets effects fine. Uh, it's still tribute a worm to search a worm, so I guess that's fine. It's a quick play as well, which could come up. I don't know, this one's not the most insane. It also has the bonus that um, uh, if you control a non-effect monster, you can banish it from grave to add a Tenny from deck to hand. Obviously, that's more sp uh, specific to Tenny, but again, if you are splashing a Tenny engine with whatever other future like worm deck that's out there, maybe that could be a play that actually comes up fairly often for a free follow-up resource. So, yeah. And the last card uh, for, for spells and traps is Waterfall of Dragon Souls. This is another card. This card actually saw play with True Dracos for a little bit. Um, it's a really cool trap, and when you activate, you get to pick one of two effects. The first one allows you to just add any worm from deck to hand. Great. Search it. You technically have a Rota. It's a trap, which is slow, but you technically have a card that can search every single worm in existence. Cool. Everything's searchable. The other effect allows you to send any uh, number of worm monsters from hand and or field uh, to grave to then draw uh, cards equal to the number of monsters you sent plus once. If you send one, you draw two. You send two, you draw three. You send three, you draw four, um, which is really cool. So if you're playing like a hand trap kind of deck, you could send multiple cards and then just dr like draw into hand traps for extra disruption, which is really cool. Um, Kind of a bummer it doesn't destroy. If it destroyed, it'd be so good with Yang Zings and like True Kings and stuff triggering their effects. Like that'd be crazy. But I understand why they didn't do that. Still a decent card nonetheless that just allows you to dig. So let's move to the extra deck real quick. True King of All Calamities. It's a worm. There's not really much synergy other than that, other than the fact that like True Kings are level nine. So, okay, has some potential there. Yazi, this card is insane. We saw him a long time ago being abused with Mare Mare to pop a card on your opponent's side of the field and then make a Link 4, really strong. Baxia, this is a card that specifically is, is only good in Worm decks because when you make him, you get to uh, target cards on the field up to the number of different attributes uh, of Worm monsters that were used for his summon and then shuffle them into the deck. So uh, if you could like either Quick Synchro into him on your opponent's turn or just summon him straight up, you're probably going to be able to shuffle one to two cards uh, your opponent controls back into the deck. That's pretty damn strong. Um, also, you can like pop a card on your field to then like revive. Um, what is it? What do you do? Target? What, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Then revive like a level four lower monster, which is pretty cool. So Yang, pop a Yang Zing. They float, but also reborn one. Pretty good. Shao Fang is another one. Gives you a pretty cool floodgate effect. Um, he has a lot of text. He's been abused a little bit in virtual world as of late, um, but definitely another card to note. And then of course Deng Long. This card's banned. But the saving, the, the one thing you can keep in mind is this card is not banned in the OCG at all. So if, if Konami wanted to just take this card off the list, it would make a lot of sense to a lot of people. And uh, we'd be able to like actually test out like how this card can like get the job done in, uh, you know, in the TCG. Really see how much the TCG can can abuse this card because the OCG has it and it's, it's not doing anything. So maybe that'd be a huge buff this card's fucking wild next up metaphys horse this is a card i've played personally in um uh, zephyrus and it has better synergy in zephyrus than anywhere else but it does still have the bonus that if it's just made with an effect monster you can just target any card on the field and negates effects permanently so it's a negation potentially disruption if you can make it as a quick effect so yeah I don't know. There's definitely still use there, potentially. 
Um, whoops, my bad. Um, next up, we have Draco Berserker of the Tenyi, another Tenyi card, but it's a generic uh, Synchro level eight. And he just says when any monster effects activated, banish that monster. So from hand, field, graveyard, we know how centric, like graveyard centric the deck, uh, the, the game is right now. This card's actually pretty good. I mean, imagine like a virtual world activating in hand and you just banish it. Your opponent activates Lulu, the best virtual world monster in the main deck, and you just banish it. Great. That's actually pretty good. It's not a bad disruption at all. Uh, and I think the last card we have to note here, yeah, the last card we have to note here is Shaman of the Tenny. I saved this one for last specifically. This card is insane. It takes any two more monsters, so very generic for just the type in general. And allows you to discard a card to target any worm monster in Grave. You can special summon it, uh, but for the rest of the turn, you can't activate the effects of monsters from the extra deck except for Tenny's. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't say you can't summon other monsters. You just can't activate the effects. So you could literally make an Opelousa because Opelousa doesn't need to trigger or anything. You just make Opelousa and you just wait to negate stuff until your opponent's turn. Still works, right? The main thing is this allows you to revive any worm in the game. That includes Mare Mare. Mare Mare can only be summoned by a worm monster's effect. This is a worm. It just revives it. And it can discard at its cost. Discard Mare Mare. Revive Mare Mare. Token. 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 Synchros. Exceeds. Whatever you want. Very, 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 very strong. Um, also, if any uh, non-effect monster declares an attack while this card is on the field, you can just like pop a card. That also could come up for sure, especially if you're playing a Tenny Engine, like we mentioned before, in a Worm deck. I just think this card is one of the, the like craziest cards that that Worms will definitely abuse in the future. I can't wait to see how. I love this card. Design is sick. The effects are sick. Very, very good. Very, very good. But bottom line, I think Worms are cooler than Dragons. I don't know about how everybody else feels. I've never been the biggest Dragon guy in general, but I love Tenny's. I love Yang Zings, and I, I, they, I think they just have a certain essence to them that regular dragons just don't have. They, they really feel like worms, something separate from dragons. So hopefully we either get like something like Deng Long off the ban list, maybe more support for Yang Zings, for Ten Yis, for uh, you know, any of these other archetypes that actually allows um, them to flourish, or maybe just an entirely new archetype that just uh, can use some of these these engines uh, in them to really flourish. And uh, that's what I, I look forward to the most, for sure, out of this kind of discussion. So that's gonna do it for me here today, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what you want to see, like, worm-wise for the future. Do you wanna see one of these decks pop up, or do you wanna see a new deck pop out that's, that's worm and, and really have a chance to compete? Um, I'd love to see Yang Zings be playable again. It definitely seems like one of those engines that needs to be splashed with something. But um, I think there's definitely a handful of things that that definitely could be considered as far as the other half of that deck. So um, that's what I'd love to see. And Tenyis. I really want to see Tenyis do something at some point. I do think they're silly. They're pretty solid cards. So... That's going to do it from here today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, like I said, leave your comments down below uh, on the question there. And I will, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.